Ashley Bratton, uh, Redemption Fellowship. So blessed to be a part of this ministry and so excited just about what God's doing. And um, I wanted to just show you a few, uh, do a little housekeeping before we get started on our webinar today to make sure you guys, um, you guys uh, are connected and have everything you need. So um, I am going to put in chat in just a second our links to our social. Uh, before you log off today, make sure you click on those and join our new Facebook page, our new Instagram. I'm also going to put our YouTube. Join that too. Subscribe to that. We're going to put uh, be putting content on that um, for you guys. And we're just excited. I also wanted to show you, I'm going to actually jump on and show you our our website and I wanted to let let you see basically I want you to see our resource page as you can see hopefully right here this is our resource page if you go to our website which is fellowship.myredemption.cc and on there is the resource page and we have some member only resources that are right here as you see and just wanted to let you know that this is available and um, wanted to let you know that uh, if you do not have the password for this that I have sent out then if you'll inbox me and let me know we want to make sure that you have that so that you can stay connected all our past webinars are on here and all the handouts that we've done so uh, anyway we are really excited about that but all, like I mentioned we do have um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and I want to make sure I get you guys all connected uh, with all of our platforms. Um, so anyway, well, welcome to our monthly webinars. We're so excited. We love what we get to do, and we love, um, gosh, just getting resourced. All of our members are not just uh, senior pastors, but just leaders and ministers all over the world. So whether uh, nonprofit, uh, worship teams, bivocational or senior pastors of, of a thousand member church. I mean, you name it, we've got it and we're excited to all be connected. Um, so a few bit, bits of housekeeping. If you have, we love to have your video on because we love to see your face. Um, if you're able to be stationary uh, and don't have a lot of noise and all that good stuff, then we'd love to see your face. If you are mobile and on the move today, then if you could just make sure you stop your video, that would be awesome and help us not get dizzy while we're watching the call and also we'll be muting everybody once we start um and so uh thanks for helping us with that that helps everybody to be able to see and hear clearly um i did want to let you know that we do have some announcements at the end all of our live viewers are eligible for a giveaway uh that we have today we're so excited our speaker will tell you about what we're giving away today in just a minute um yeah, so we're going to try to stay till 30 minutes today. We do have a survey for you at the end, so stay tuned. Um, but without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to some amazing pastors and leaders that have been connecting with our ministry for so long, as long as I can remember, 10 or 15 years. They are co-pastors. They are amazing parents. They are a dynamic duo. Um, they do so many things. They do pastor a thriving, amazing church just outside of Charlotte in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, pastor Maurice is also one of our overseers for North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, but they are incredible, incredible people, incredible leaders, um, gosh, connectors, motivators. Uh, pastor Kay can sing like no other. She she leads worship at their church and um guys just doing really cool stuff there but i don't want to take up their time but i do want to introduce to you the one and only pastor k pastor maurice revel they'll be talking with us today we're going to be going um talking about um balance and so they'll they'll kind of give an intro of what they're going to cover today but pastor mo pastor k we welcome you we're so excited uh to hear what you have for us today Let me make sure I turn, there we go. I cut his video off, so it's not his fault. I'm gonna start their video back and unmute them so, so they can, let's see if we can find them. Pest Mo. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. okay, good. Hey. All right, can we go ahead and get going? 
Yes, let's do it. Awesome, awesome. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, hello. First of all, I'm Maurice Ravel. For those of you that I have not had the pleasure of meeting yet, and this is my wife. Hello, everyone. I'm Katiti, better known as Pastor K. Hey. <laughs> awesome. Hey, guys, we know we have a brief period of time up here, so we want to go ahead and jump right into it and, and get going. I pray and trust, first of all, that you guys are doing very well during this quarantine and um, this uncertain time. Uh, uh, we're having to figure out a whole lot of things and do ministry in different capacities, but thankful to our leaders and to Ashley. Uh, we're already ahead of the curve in terms of what we do via Zoom and and, uh, and webinars and able to still communicate the gospel and, and things that encourage one another uh, without having to be present physically. So we're grateful for this means. Absolutely. Ashley, thank you for your diligence thank and you. all that you do uh, for Redemption Fellowship. And once again, just want to say hello to everyone that is joining us today. All right, now we're going to be talking about balancing acts. And uh, some of you guys might be wondering, well, balancing acts, what is that? A balance is with quarantine. You know, the kids aren't going to soccer practice. Oh, my you know, uh, my daughter's not at cheerleading practice or anything like that. But so what is that a balance? Well, you guys know everything in this kingdom with the army of God. And before they say attention, they give what is called a preparatory command. And so I'm a former military officer. So, you know, before they call the platoon to attention, they say platoon, that's the preparatory command, attention. All right, that is the command. That is actually what you move. So in the kingdom of God, uh, we always are preparing. You find me? there's a preparatory command before we actually execute. The command of execution is attention. So therefore, uh, although it seems like there might not be a tremendous amount of balance that you have to maintain, trust me, even during this quarantine, there's a lot that we have to maintain as it relates to balance. You know why? Because now we don't, we aren't even able to get out to the office to do ministry. And so now ministry is within our house 24 seven. It used to be, you know, we can have a break from ministry, at least go to the office for eight to 10 hours, you know, and come back home and separate, you know, the office, separate the church from what we're doing home. Now the church, even your preaching to some degree might even have to be at home, depending upon what level of quarantine you guys are on. And so, you know, your study is at home, your quarantine is at home. If you're doing video meetings with, with couples and you're doing, yeah. you know, uh, uh, counseling, that is at home. Your kids, you know, are unable to do some of the things that would alleviate, you know, some of the, the pressure at home. And, you know, and, and they're unable to do that now because they can't really go outside. You can't go, you know, and, and dine out at a restaurant. So in my opinion, I think it's very important that we have this discussion on balance, not just for the future when things return back to normal, but actually how to navigate this quarantine situation now. Absolutely. Because I'm going to tell you, balance is not having it all together. That's one thing. Balance is a, it means an overall sense of wellness in your life and in all areas. You know, you're not working in chaos. You're working together. So balance is a whole lot of things. And we're going to go over some of those things today. Absolutely. Ashley, if you don't mind, we're going to go ahead and get started with the, um, the slide presentation. Uh, what does God say about balance? Uh, what does God say about balance? Well, there is a scripture in the word of God over in uh, Proverbs chapter 1. All right, and I think she's going to, you know, start sharing some of this in just a second. So we'll give it a moment. All right, let's go to that second slide, Ashley, if you don't mind. All right, it'll be up here in just a second. What does God say about balance? Now, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Proverbs 11 and 1, New uh, American Standard Bible. Now, that being said, in the proper context, you know, whenever it's talking about balance, and you can take this down whenever you want to, or you can leave it up there, Ashley, either way, however you want to do it. But in the proper context of the scripture, it is talking about business. It's talking about business and how to relate to our business partners and to make sure that we're not, you know, extracting uh, um, uh, more from them, that we don't, that everything is level, that everything is proper, that everything is fair and equitable. However, it still can be applied. You guys know we teach the law of double reference, meaning, you know, what you reap is what you sow, literally, and then what you reap is what you sow spiritually. That's the law of double reference. So in that regard, this same scripture can apply in terms of the inequity that we can have in any areas of our lives or the imbalance that we can have in any areas of our lives as it relates to family, as it relates to ministry, and as it relates to, to business, maybe, you understand, and, uh, and to marriage. And so now, therefore, whenever we are focusing too much on one area, it brings the other areas out of balance and out of alignment. 
And so because God is a God of balance, he wants to make sure that everything that we do is balanced. You know, the church is the bride of Christ. All right. So he has a marriage. <laughs> okay. All right. We are the children of God. So God has family. You understand me? And so he ministers by his Holy Spirit. And so God has the same elements that we need, but he is balanced in his approach to doing everything. Therefore, he can look back on his day and say it was good. All right. And so whenever it comes to balancing and assessing our balance, we have to ask ourselves a question, you know, as it relates to our God nature, God has ordained and God has postured us and God has graced us and God has given us a proper example to be balanced. Absolutely. And um, I guess we can just jump right into marriage, balance in marriage, or you have some more things? Well, well one to? thing that I want to share okay. with you guys, too, I'll put that screen back up there if you don't yeah. mind, Ashley, one more time, uh, as, relates to, as relates to balance. Thank you so much for that. Now, and let's go all the way down to the end one here. With God, anything out of proper balance and order does not reflect his character and therefore does not please him. And so now, so what I want to give you, balance does this. It reduces errors, stress, energy, and time. That's, That's what balance does. And so now that we're on quarantine, I want to encourage everyone to take a moment to reset. And so rather than, you know, getting frustrated because we're on quarantine, we can go as we desire, come as we desire. Let's take a moment to press this balance reset button because balance reduces errors, stress, energy, and time. Statistics indicate that people that are more balanced in their lives, they have more time to do discretionary, they have more discretionary time, they have less stress, they commit less errors, and they ultimately have more energy to do the things that they want to do. Now, so in one last fine, final caveat regarding uh, balance, balance is like faith. Without it, it is impossible for us to please God because the Bible says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. All right, so Ashley, let's go on down to slide number two as it relates to balancing marriage. Honey, you can go ahead and get started on that one. Well, absolutely. Just piggybacking off what my husband said about reset, it, you know, it is a time to reset. And um, we're going into balancing marriages. Number one, it says, don't lose yours, try to Same save theirs. Thing. This is something that my husband and I, we have done for years. Because, you know, we, we love ministry. We've been in ministry for probably about, 17 years. Hey, Ashley, okay. hang on one second. Okay. Ashley, can you put the marriage slide up? I think we're gone down to the okay. second the second slide, family. If you don't mind putting the, the marriage slide up. There we go. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Don't lose yours trying to save theirs. Because all, all the time, a lot of times, we try to do things in our own strength. And this, when you're in ministry and you're married, you sometimes you can be overcommitted with your members, but be under connected with your husband and family. So, you know, we said, you know, we're not gonna lose ours. You know, we have to say, and we have to know how to say that word, no. Absolutely. No, it's okay. Tell your neighbor, it's okay to say no, no. Sometimes we cannot do everything. So, you know, because then our family starts lacking, our marriage start lacking. And so our marriage, we're not gonna lose ours. That's why we have date nights. You have to make it, be intentional in what you do. Be intentional. Say, you know what? We're going to have date night this week. We're going to, this month, this is what we're going to do. Because if we don't put it on the calendar, most of the time, we will not be there. When you have a doctor's appointment, guess what you do? You log it in and you said, I'm going to be there. So that's what we do. We spend time together. And that is a very important time. When you guard your time with God and you guard your time with your marriage. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Ashley, if you don't mind, you can take the screen down now for a second. I want to to see you guys yeah. uh, for, as we share this. Once again, that is a uh, that is the foundation in terms of how we interact with one another in ministry. We've said it for years. Don't, don't lose, lose yours your trying to save things. theirs. Don't lose your house trying to save no. theirs. Don't lose your children trying to save theirs. Don't lose your ministry trying to save theirs. Don't lose your car trying to save theirs. I have noticed that the people that we love on the most very often don't have the fullest commitment. They don't have the deepest commitment level to your ministry. When a new church blows into town, 
then you know they're gone. The average person in a charismatic, faith-filled, word-oriented church, the average lifespan statistically now is three and a half years. So if you're able to keep people at your church for longer than three and a half years in a spirit-filled church, you are doing something incredible. So you have to posture yourself to say that life is going to go on after this worship leader. Life must go on after this children's church director. Life still has to go on with us. Life has to still go on with our children, even when that top giver leaves. And so based upon that, don't lose yours trying to save theirs. People will leave and go to other churches. They will get connected with other ministries. You do whatever you can uh, to salvage every relationship that you can. Make sure at the end of the day, I know we do, that we assess why did someone you know, leave our yes, ministry yes. and be quite frank with you. I mean, thankfully, we've grown to the point that we just can't keep up with all of that. So, you know, we have to make sure, but our top tier leaders, if we have, if they, if we find the door has opened at our top tier level of leadership, we want to know, you know, what is going on. We want to give them some feedback so we can, well, get some feedback from them so that we can make adjustments. And so everything isn't just people leaving. Sometimes there are things or needs that we didn't meet. But in, but in the fullness of it, don't lose yours trying to save theirs so that you are in balance. Now, as it relates to, my wife just mentioned date night and some of those things, once again, are forward thinking and preparatory in nature. What you can do right now, you can't really have too much of a date night outside anyway, but you can have a date night in your home. Absolutely. You know, you can put your kids to bed early. You can do a number of those different things. But now what I want to do real, real quick is something that you could do during this quarantine, which I think is extremely, extremely important to take as much time as you possibly can to locate uh, where you are in your relationship with your spouse uh, uh, and or, you know, uh, your fiance. Now, there are three levels to marriage. There are three levels to marriage. Those of you that might be single up here today and joining us, you know, once again, this is preparatory, so it might not necessarily apply to you immediately right now, but you can take this in and, uh, and be able to apply apply a little bit later on as your relationship grows or if you entertain a relationship. The three primary levels to marriage, and I'll go over them very briefly. One is the intimacy level. That's when everything is wonderful. Nobody is doing anything to upset the other person. It's that courtship stage. I mean, everything is wonderful. Then after that level, you know, let's call that, you know, we call the intimacy level the penthouse level. Yeah. That's that's the high place. You know, that's when people have to put in a certain code <laughs> to get access to your relationship. Yeah. Not everybody is speaking into your relationship. You're not entertaining a lot of outside thought and dialogue and problem solving because there's really not too many problems to solve. There's no conflict. Then the second level, which we call in the house, kind of like the main level, that's the conflict stage. That's the conflict level, all right? That's when, obviously, you have challenges that you have to resolve. Uh, you know, you have disagreements that come up. You know, you have spending disagreements. You have child-rearing disagreements. You have you know, ministry responsibility, responsibility, disagreement, you have decision-making disagreement, purchase disagreements, you know, that's the stage, you know, after intimacy that many people end up, unfortunately, kind of hanging out in for longer periods of time than they need to. And then the last level uh, of relationship or stage of relationship are, is the withdrawal level. We consider that to be the basement level. The withdrawal level is when, you know, uh, when it's, it's beyond conflict and you're now going into your corner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and the bell doesn't ring for you to come out. You follow? You're, you're no longer even fighting for your marriage. For the bell ring, you come out. Well, we're still going to fight for this marriage. You're not even in that place anymore. You're in withdrawal. You know, she's over there. You're over there. Your, your, your marriage is just existing at this time. It's just in, in existence mode. You're paying bills together. You're doing ministry together because you don't want people to know how bad it is at home, to be quite frank with you, because you guys know we have a lot of, you know, pastors and teachers. The divorce rate in the church is the same as it is in the world. And then and when it comes to Christian leaders, sometimes we're able to put on a mask and kind of get through it on Sunday morning. And the congregation can know based upon how well you're doing, based upon how you compliment your spouse, you know, yes. publicly, how you interact and all of those things. People know, they can sense how you look at one another, how sharply you speak to one another, just a number, how often you are together. So now that being said, uh, during to assess what it, which your spouse is on. Are we still at intimacy level, you know, where it's pretty much kind of problem free? We're talking very consistently. We're communicating very consistently. Our bedroom is consistent. We're meeting one another's needs. Uh, uh, we're speaking one another's love languages and not going to get to all of that today. Or are, are we at conflict level? 
And here's the thing. This is what we try to teach in our marriage uh, or try to convey in our marriage uh, and relationship uh, uh, seminars that we do and retreats that we do. But listen, the way that you get uh, to back to the place of intimacy is the same way you get from intimacy to the withdrawal. There's steps. So if you get down into the basement, you got to go down from the penthouse, down steps to conflict, and from steps to, from conflict into the basement. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna get back to the penthouse, get your marriage to the place that it wants to be, that rich place that it once was, you're gonna have to go through steps to get it back to the top. You're gonna probably have to broach and approach that conflict area when you start saying, "Well, this is what's wrong. This is what I don't like." This is what annoys me about you. You know, all of those things, and we're gonna to have to be mature enough to be able to handle the input uh, and the assessments that our spouses give us so that we can ultimately make those corrections and get back to that penthouse level of marriage, okay? All right, uh, honey, anything else you wanna add on Absolutely. that? Absolutely, just to add with my husband, with the intimacy and the conflict and the withdrawal, you want to definitely um, assess, you want to have, you wanna create an atmosphere that your spouse can come and ask you questions and that you, you're not critical. You just, you, you're asking, a lot of times what we do is I ask my husband, how am I doing? Am I doing great? Am I a 10? I'm thinking I'm a 10. I might be a four, you know? So we assess things. We, you know, locate where you are in your marriage. Yeah. Absolutely. So take this time that, that, that we're quarantined to really, you know, have some coffee, go sit yeah. out on the back porch and say, you know what? Why don't you write this down? Write that down. There are lots of tools. Uh, a couple of these tools and marriage assessments we will give to Ashley and she'll send them out with some of the notes. Uh, but obviously for the sake of time today, we don't have the time to get into all of that. But just want to hit on some uh, pretty significant major areas. Ashley, can we go on down to balancing the family? All right, guys. Now, as it relates to balancing the family, y'all know what the Bible says about a child that is left alone. Scripture says a child that is left alone, my God, will bring shame to his mother. And so while we need to make sure that we are spending quality time with our children, all right, quality time with our children, especially during this quarantine, when I ask ourselves, you know, is it quality or quarreling? What is going on during this quarantine? Is it quality or quarreling? Are we spending it with quality time or with quarreling? You can go ahead and take that down, Ashley, if you don't mind. All right, my wife and I, for example, we're talking, uh, uh, we're still on family, thank you. My wife and I were talking about last night about balance and family, and you wanna share a couple of things and we'll get back to the slide. Um, absolutely, family is very important to us. We have four kids. We have a 21 year old, a um, what, a 10, a 13 year old, a 10, yeah. and a 14, 11, uh, 14, and eight. And eight. And so, you know, our house is like an adventure. So, um, <laughs> you know, with our kids, you know, we have to decide what, you know, each child is different. Each child is different. You know, our little one, our youngest one, she loves to be touched. She loves that physical touch. And then one thing about the children is, they want, when you come in the house, you can be in the house, but be present in the house. You know, you can be in the house, but they feel like, you know, you're not there. So, you know, we try to assess and we try to ask them, hey, what can we do? Look, let's talk. You know, when a child comes up to you, they want you to listen. If they bring you an art project, they want you to look at it. So we try to, you know, ask them. You know, my husband and I, we were sharing, I know we get ahead of ourselves, but um, we were sharing last night. We asked our children, we said, you know, we're in ministry. How do you feel when we're at the church? How do you feel? Tell us. And our youngest one would say, she said, you know, when you all are at church, we know you all have roles that you all have, but sometimes when we're um, in the truck, we're ready to eat. We're, we're ready to eat. You know, we're ready to go to lunch. Yeah. And so, you know, ready to leave. You know, we're ready to leave. <laughs> you know how that last person gets you, gets you at church? Hey, I want to ask you. They and they ask you. They said they wanted to ask you one thing, but it's ten things. So you know, we're just mindful <laughs> of our kids. We're mindful of our kids and say, you know what? You know what? You have. We have emails, and we. Have, I can give you a call. But right now, let me put, place my attention on the children. That's something that we do. As for the family, and and when my and, and when my wife says we we are mindful of our kids, to be quite frank with you. We make every intention to be yes. mindful of our kids. We do not hit the spot every time. We do. Let, let me make it clear. 
our marriage is not the perfect marriage. We have a great marriage. We're not ashamed to say it. Our congregation knows it. You know, they, people tell us this, as Jake's is to broken women, as Creflo is to raising money, that's what you guys are to marriage. And so that is a compliment uh, to us. But we will be first to tell you, we don't dot every I and cross oh, every no. T. We are consistently working on our marriage as well as our parenting. One thing that we consistently do, you can see this if you follow our social media thread. So this is not theory to us. This is life application. This is how we do it. You know, I grew up without my mom. My, my wife grew up in a, she was a PK. So she grew up in a household with a mom and a dad in a stable household. You know, I did not. You know, my biological father was nowhere around. And then my mother ultimately, you know, remarried. Well, she married. And, um, and I had a stepfather and he was, anyway, that's a different story. And so <laughs> he wasn't a bonus dad. Let's just say that. He was a stepdad. He wasn't a bonus dad. And so by virtue of that, I made an intention that I was going to spend every opportunity that I could to build my kids, make sure that I was at every recital, at every basketball game. I coached my son's football yes. game. I coached my son and my daughter's basketball game. We go to, we had never missed a recital or anything unless we were 212 and they had something going on. So we're not telling you theory. We're telling you what works for us. And we're telling, telling you what's important for us and what is priority. You know, don't lose yours trying to save theirs. Our conviction has always been, we don't want our children to grow up hating church, right. you know, and once they leave our houses that they're estranged, you know, from us and the things of God because that took their parents away. So we really strive by the grace of God to promote as much balance as we possibly can. And we let our kids know there are times that we have to grind and then there are times that we play hard. We take vacations, oh, you know, yes. seven days and miss yes. a couple Sundays to hang out with our kids, you know, unplug, turn the phones off, all of those different types of things. And so now uh, that we have this quarantine, it's that much better for us. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that much better. We break out the Uno cards. Oh, yeah. we, bring out, we break out Jenga. You know, we break out, you know, I don't even know how to do, what is it? I'm not interested in PlayStation and all of that, but I'm learning how to do that with my son, that, yeah. Fortnite, because that's what he does. You know, my daughter is a drawer, so she and I are going to have a drawing contest contest the whole family's gonna have a drawing contest later so now while we're in in quarantine there are a number of different things that we can do as it relates to quarantine but this is one thing that i want to share with you very briefly i would suggest that you guys do immediately mm -hmm. if you can prime example time uh, uh my wife and i were talking about it last night you know there's an old adage uh when i was a volunteer administrator for some kids uh, at one point it said give the best gift that you can give a child which is time all right, that is wonderful, that will sell, and that is true, however, time is important to kids based upon where they are in life. That's good. You follow me? Prime, prime example, a, 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 an eight-year-old, our eight-year-old or my son, he might want to have quality time, you know, if he's being bullied, or he might want to have quality time if there's some weight gain with one of our children and their self-esteem is kind of decreased or whatever. But now my teenage daughter, when she's curvy, she's a cheerleader, class president, and everything that goes along with that, she really doesn't even want to have quality time with us unless it's on her terms. You follow me? She really wants to hang out with her kids, TikTok, all that stuff, yes. Yes. and you know, text and all that. So now, so me, us making, you know, everybody's going to sit down, and we're all <laughs> going to just have quality time, and she's sitting there twiddling her fingers and doing things. is not necessarily the most effective way to engage her because she, that's not what she needs at that particular time in her life. Now, that being said, I want to share with you guys a resource, and that's five love languages, five love languages com. The love language is very often, we just normally uh, use that as relates to husband and wife. Mm -hmm. But there is a love language assessment for children. Yes. There's a love language assessment for uh, teenagers and a love language assessment for husband and wife. All right. So go ahead to the five love languages dot com and do those assessments. Have your children anyway, have your children do those assessments so you can see. Uh, what what they need at this particular moment and you can love them more deeply and effectively all right now let's go ahead uh and now assess it and address it assess it and address it so take this moment to assess what's going on to your family and then address it prayerfully address it get feedback from your kids let's move on Ashley now to balancing ministry all right I, I want to say this and I'm going to pass it off my wife just a little bit listen Remember that God commanded Adam and Eve to be fruitful and not busy. 
There's a major difference yes. between being fruitful and being busy. Mm. You understand? People a lot of times they say, oh, Pastor, I would have called you. Or Pastor Kay, I would have called you. But I know you guys are busy. I know you guys are really busy. Nah, we say pump your brakes. No, our intention is not to be busy. Our intention is to be fruitful. All right, honey, you got anything you want to say? And you can uh, take the screen down if you like, Esther. Okay, absolutely. Because we want to be fruitful. We want to, the Bible says, you know them by the fruit that they be, that they bear. So, I mean, just being fruitful, will people will see your fruit. And um, even in ministry, what type of fruit is on your tree? Is it love, joy? Are you smiling? You know, it's, it's all of that. So in ministry, you know, you want to set the pace. You want to set the pace. And I think we have an acronym. I think the first one, P, preparation. Preparation. Hold on one second. Okay. Let me hit on that pace. Okay. Uh, one thing that tires people out and makes us imbalanced in ministry very often is because we're generally trying to keep up with someone mm. that we see. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, for example, prime example, Pastor Ron and Redemption Church, oh my God. Ah, has been, ha, ha, it has been such, you know, Impression. I can't even really put it into words how much of an asset they have been, how grateful we are, yes. what tremendous leaders they are, what tremendous examples that they have been before us. Uh, however, uh, what Pastor Ron and Pastor Hope do on their level, you know, we don't have the resources, we don't have, you know, uh, uh, the help and the support to do things at the level they're doing them. And so it would be unwise for us to throw our lives, our ministry out of balance, trying to compare ourselves with them. And so in my opinion, no matter what example they are and how great they are, we have to make sure that we are running at our pace based upon the con that bus based upon our own context. Otherwise, we'll try to run too fast. And when you run too fast, you get exhausted and everything that comes along with that. So it is good to have the carrot out there before the horse, but every everyone has to know how to pace themselves as relates to ministry and that could be any ministry that you 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 gather information from any ministry or person for that matter that is a mentor or is a great example you still we still have to pace ourselves go ahead absolutely and in, even when we're pacing ourselves um preparation i think we're talking about preparation and i wanted to say this um preparation definitely for me and my husband um when we get when i get up in the morning i have to guard my time with god that is my first thing that, that I try to do is ask God and say, you know what, lead me, guide me during the day. Because a lot of times things come at us and we don't know. But if we ask Holy Spirit to God guard your time, that's so important. Then you can count up the cost. You count up the cost. You can say, you know, while you're in ministry at this season, you might not be able to do certain things. Yeah. We have red months. We have black months. You know, sometimes in the ministry, they say, oh, I want to do. They have all of these bright, creative ideas, but it takes money, you know. So we have to count up the cost and we say, you know, we're in our red month or we're in our black month. So we have to count up the cost. And then on that note. Let, let me okay. jump in there, uh, especially for those of you that are leaders up here. When yeah. she says red months, black months, if you've heard of that before, it's kind of like time shift. You know, they have weeks and everything like that. And so we break our months down. And all of our leaders know that when you submit your budget during the beginning of the year, you need to go ahead and submit your budget. You don't submit your budget. You might be short when you need what you need. All right? Because we have red, black months. Red, our red normally, red meaning when you're, you know, it's not as financially productive. And, you know, it's not, you're not in a windfall, if you will. Our red months are typically like yours because ministry generally is kind of cyclical across the board. And so typically our red, our, our black months run from August. All right. I mean, I'm sorry, September to generally about mid-November because then Black Friday is going to come. And Black Friday for the stores is Red Sunday for the church. You guys understand what I'm saying? And so nevertheless, it generally runs black from September until mid-November. After that, it runs red from typically mid-November until about uh, the end of February, Christmas shopping and all of those things. Then we generally run black again from uh, uh, the end of February until the beginning of uh, uh, the end of May. That's when the holidays start and generally red season is the summer. So that being said, that is what we do to balance ministry financially and take some of the financial pressure off of us. Absolutely. And then we study, you know, the Bible says study to um, show yourself approved, a workman needed not to be ashamed. So study and then we analyze, analyze what we're going to do. 
when we do that preparation. So analyze, sit down and say, you know what, what is my starting goal? What is my end goal? Have benchmarks. You know, you say, okay, I'm going to do this by a certain time. So when you prepare, that's preparation. All right, we're, we're running, we're, we're uh, getting close to time. So we're going to go down through these last ones, Pace. And we're giving you guys an acronym for Pace so that hopefully it's a much easier to remember. Number one is preparation. Yeah. All right, if you're going to set the tone, you're going to set the praise, uh, uh, preparation. The next thing is acceleration. Whenever we prepare properly, we can accelerate properly. It's just like that, that distance runner. And so that's what we're kind of comparing it to, to run this race with patience. All right, the race that is set before us. So we've got acceleration after that. Acceleration is being able to develop those people around us. Because if we're able to eliminate the weight off of us, then we can accelerate much quicker. All right? Uh -huh. Absolutely. And that comes with delegation. Don't be, don't be afraid to delegate. The next one is conservation. That's know when to slow down and rest. We said that at the beginning. Know when to say no. Know when to say, you know what? I need to take care. I have to do a self-evaluation and take care of self-care. So that's conservation. Absolutely, guys. So once again, this pace, you're going to set that pace and run in ministry yes. and not give out and not quit, and not burn out. Number one, preparation. Count up the cost. Do your study. Do your analyzation. Acceleration. Develop those leaders around you. Delegate responsibilities. That means that we have to get to a place that we're trusting other people to carry the vision. That means during our preparation stage, we are communicating the vision, vision properly so that he that reads it can run with it. They can accelerate, all right? The conservation, as my wife just mentioned, is knowing when to slow down. Any good distance runner knows that they have to conserve their, their energy for that, that final home stretch, if you will. So that's conservation, knowing when to say no, knowing when to slow down, taking vacation and resting. And then the last balance in pace, in ministry and pace is elimination. Identifying your top three time thieves. Identifying your top three time thieves. Thanks, Ashley. You can take this down uh, if you like to. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, while we all are on quarantine, once again, there's a lot that we can do with our family. There's a lot that we can do to begin to pace ourselves and to uh, look forward to this next leg of ministry once we bring people back together, begin to analyze who can I count on in my team, who's been more consistent in contacting me and asking me how am I doing, what can we do, you know, all of those things. And they might be your next leaders after you come out of this quarantine. But then the last thing is elimination. See what, at, during this quarantine, what from your life is stealing your time? Mm. We call them time thieves yes. here. We got two types of thieves. We call them time thieves, and then we have dream thieves. And what we have to do is identify what is stealing our time, all right? And because if it's stealing your time, it's probably stealing your energy, it's stealing your creativity, it's stealing time away from your family that could be devoted, time away from your marriage that could be devoted, time away from prayer that could be devoted to prayer and worship and all of those things. And so, um, guys, uh, that the last E was, well, the last one in pace was elimination. And sometimes that's hard to do because we are creatures of habit, and um, it's just like cleaning out a closet. We just always think that we can wear that shirt again, you know what I'm saying, or get into those jeans again, or that favorite T-shirt of ours. We just want to keep it, and it's, you know, sentimental or whatever the case may be, but a lim sometimes elimination is needed. Even our bodies have a digestive system because elimination is needed, and if not, it can ultimately back up and cause us great harm. It's the same thing when it comes to the body of Christ. We have to have an avenue whereby we can eliminate waste. All right? So, and that's what helps pace. All right? Well, Ashley, we're done for the day. Hopefully, this has been a blessing. You guys have taken away some nuggets from this. And um, thank you guys for sharing time with us today. Yes, thank you. Ashley, you still here? There she is. <laughs> thank you. I am here I'm going to try it this way. Can you guys hear me? Yes. It's probably going to show the, hold on one second. We're going to see this. Is it echoey for y'all? Yeah. Okay, we'll do it this way, but it's probably, you're going to hear, um, you're probably going to see the, redemption fellowship icon instead of my face but that's okay um but anyway oh my gosh that was absolutely amazing i couldn't write fast enough i kept having to turn my screen off so i could write and take notes and 
Um, gosh, what a great overview of just marriage, family, ministry. I'm sure most of us on the call today would say those are the, you know, the three most important things, obviously, after Jesus in our life, and um, we've given our life to that. So, uh, Pastor Mo, thank you guys so much, Pastor Katiti, and we thank you. do our have pleasure. resources. They did send um, some handouts, and I'll make sure that when we send the recap email with the video link, that we send those resources as well. I did wanna let you know right now as we speak, I am dropping a uh, link in the chat. So if you can go to that link in the chat really fast, we have a giveaway. You know, we love to come bearing gifts. We love to make sure we bless you guys with whether it's resources or sweet gear or whatever. So I'm gonna let Pastor Mo has is bearing gifts and he has something he wants to send to somebody, one of the lucky winners of live viewers today. So Pastor Mo, tell them a little bit about what they'll be getting if they win. All right, if you guys, I uh, uh, and my apologies, Ashley, I think I got that email to you late. But uh, at any rate, guys, I have this line of, um, you know, of active wear gear, and it's called Favor. It's, it's called Flawed but Favored, all right? And so it is a good communication tool uh, to people in the world that just shows us you can be fashionable. But we, look, we're still under construction. We have flaws, but we are still favored. And so we are going to be sending out a hoodie all right, to uh, 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 to whomever is chosen or the winner of this, can't wait to send it to you so that you can uh, wear it before your congregation. And they can say, wow, we wore that the first time. I think I wore it a couple Sundays ago, my wife and I. I and I mean, all over the internet, people wanted them. And it's just amazing. And we want to make sure that you guys get one. I love it. I'm going to try my best to show it really quick. I pulled up the email. Uh, so let's see if it comes through OK. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so there you go, flaw but favored. So he has that. We're definitely going to um, be giving that away. So we're excited about that. But also, like I mentioned, we will be sending a lot of the marriage resources, ministry resources, all the things that he uh, talked about today. They both shared today. We'll be sending those in your inbox. And, you know, I'm quarantined. Listen, I turned my, this is actually my bedroom turned into home office because uh, my office downstairs does not have doors. And with three kids under six, that oh, wow. <laughs> is a little crazy. So anyway, but um, I'm excited about what God's doing. And it's trying to, you know, hey, God, what are you doing? How do you want us to capitalize off of this time? And I think y'all shared great nuggets and examples of how we can, instead of complaining and stand, instead of focusing on what we are not able to do during this time, like what can we do? How can we grow? How can we you know, that's personally one of my biggest uh, things that I feel guilty about is time with my kids because I do work full time and um, and am out of the house a lot. And so uh, that's one of my biggest things. And it's like, look, this is a hard situation and we're believing for God to end it quickly. But guess what? Um, I'm able to get some some special quality time with them and it's been awesome. But I'm definitely going to check out those resources be sure that you fill out this link. And I did want to tell you too, if you guys know anybody else um, that it would love the fellowship, that would be this would be beneficial to them. Um, I have a link. Let me make sure I get it right. That I'm putting in chat right now. Just if, if there is somebody that you know that would love the fellowship or is looking for that connection, a pastor, a leader, somebody that wants to be in ministry that might want to get licensed or ordained or get their license and start taking those next steps. We have a monthly call that actually Pastor Mo is leading up. It's on the second Sunday of every month. And we'd love to invite you or any, not you because you're members, but if you're not a member, we'd love to invite you to that call. And that'll be on our website soon. So I'll put that in there. Um, do you guys have any closing thoughts, Pastor Mo, before we end today? No, we don't. Just praying that everyone would be safe and prosperous and reinvent themselves, gather the wealth, the most needed, you know, that well needed rest that you can. So whenever we come out of this, we'll hit the ground running. And I mean, terrorize the enemy's yes. camp yes. and glorify Jesus. <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for giving 30 minutes of your time to be with us today. Next month, we've got Pastor Tavner talking about a culture of discipleship. He'll be teaching for us. We'll send that information out soon. Don't forget to do the survey. Check your emails, and we'll be in touch soon. Love you guys. Love, Love you guys. Peace. Love you.